Hello everyone and welcome back to the health and fitness seminars. We are going to talk about dynamic footwear science today, uh, understanding fitness footwear. So what else is dynamic footwear science? Dynamic footwear science is the study of sneakers and athletic footwear that respond to the high intensity stimuli of walking, running, cutting, and jumping. Properly fitting and sizing for footwear minimizes bodily injury from acute and chronic lifestyle injuries such as cumulative standing trauma. So what are the, all the variables of dynamic footwear science? Uh, we're looking at today, we're going to talk about proper size, pronation versus supination, neutral versus posted shoes, durability, heel to toe drop, contour, price point and quality of materials, cushioning level, rotation of pressure points, and footwear structure. So the first one is proper size. So proper size for footwear allows your thumb to fit between the tip of the shoe and the tip of your longest toe. Too small a shoe can increase the risk of bunions, black toenails, blisters, and plantar fasciitis. So right now as you're listening to this, put your thumb down to your sneaker. And if your thumb cannot fit between the tip of the shoe and where your toe flexes up, your shoe is too small. Now granted, this doesn't work for pumps or heels. So ladies, keep doing what you're doing for pumps and heels. Um, your foot size and your sneaker size are two very different things. So your foot size is going to be about a size to a size and a half smaller than your sneaker size. So shoe sizing, this is an excerpt from the Dynamic Footwear Science Certification by the Binghamton Health Campaign. Uh, so this is the why. All right. So you can act, you can see all right all the all the different things that are on this on this sheet. Uh, we have black toenails. We have bunions. All right. We have some blisters. We have an ingrown toenail. All that contributed from too small a shoe. So if you want summer body, why not have summer feet too? So pronation versus supination. What it is. Pronation is a rotation of the medial bones in the mid-tarsal region of the foot inward and downward so that in the walking, in, the foot tends to come down toward its inner margin. Supination is the opposite, the corresponding movement which the foot rolls outward with an elevated arch. You can see this here. Uh, this is more of a neutral, this left foot is more of a neutral gait. You can see they used an orthotic to, to correct this excessive pronation that occurs on the right hand uh, side. So that is pronation. Supination would be the opposite from that where it would actually bow outward, all right, rather than towards the midline of the body. So this is the medial side and you can see this is some excessive pronation. So you can see this here. Uh, we have over pronation. So in that last slide we saw that. Uh, the safe range for pronation and supination, pronation, neutral, and supination. You can see this here. And then we have some over supination or excessive supination over on the right hand side here. Now, there are some shoes that work for neutral gait styles, and there are some that work for over pronation gait styles. So, Dynamic dual density foam postings are actually posted shoes that help with pronated feet. Uh, effectively, they contribute to the same goal as something called the varus post or a medial wedge, where the post controls pronation and internal rotation of the tibia and effectively the knee. Uh, dual density postings usually include higher durometer foam or higher firmness foam on the medial side, the big toe side of the shoe with a decreased durometer foam on the lateral side, the pinky to toe side. So softer side is on the outside, more firm is on the inside. The shoe stack height is typically equal on both the medial and lateral side. So the amount of foam underneath the foot is the same height on both sides of the shoe. The dynamic posting occurs under weighted pressure. So when you place your foot down, the softer foam on the lateral side will collapse more than the relative collapse on the firmer foam on the medial side, creating something called a varus post. Uh, so that is helping and disallowing overpronation. 
So this is an example of a dual density foam. You can see these different colors here. This gray foam here in the Brooks Adrenaline is actually quite firm. All right, this is called the, the um, medial post. And this here is firmer than this EVA foam on the lateral side. You can see the blue and the white is much softer than the gray. And so what happens is the shoe tips to the outside rather than the inside for someone who excessively pronates towards the middle of the body. Neutral shoes are considered to have different categories of low, medium, and high cushioning, and they're medial laterally balanced shoes. Uh, the durometer, the density of the medial and lateral sides of that shoe are equal. There's no wedge or dynamic posting pushing the foot out or in, and that's called a neutral shoe. There's more research that has come out that suggests 80% of the population should be fit to some sort of neutral platform uh, versus uh, the other 20%, which should be th um, put into posted footwear or requiring medial support. So you can see here, uh, I don't have the back of the shoe, but this white portion, this white portion of this shoe and this blue portion of the shoe wraps all the way around the foot with no difference in any of the durometers or densities of the foam. Durability. So these durability, we're going to talk about durability and price points and quality of cushioning in this slide. So variables, we have the quality of the foam, amount of cushioning, and miles or hours of use. So quality of foam. It's recommended only purchase high quality foam <clears throat> as lower quality foam does not provide substantial support for the body and risks higher injury rates. Um, so it is not worth getting a kick around pair of shoes to be walking around in. <clears throat> These shoes will create hot spots. They will create uh, issues for the body later on. You do not want to get a low quality foam shoe. Um, you don't have to get a high cushion shoe. <clears throat> you just don't want to get a low quality of foam. So on this right side, you can see if we are in that high quality cushioning level, now we have <clears throat> the choice between low, medium, and high cushioning. Um, some people like more of a ground contact feel where they can feel the ground, they can feel what's going underneath their foot, and more kind of like a, a flat, all right? Uh, that is... It's called the low cushioning shoe. They usually run anywhere between $110 to $130 for high quality cushioning. Um, now, some do run, I think the ST3 from Topo runs about $90. All right. Um, they last about 100 to 200 miles or two to four months if you're wearing it th three to four days a week. So there are a lot of nurses, there are a lot of doctors or or uh, people who work on concrete floors like Home Depot or Sam's Club that are on their feet quite a bit. And so they need good quality sh cushioning in order to support themselves throughout the day. All right. These are just kind of guidelines for that to happen. So mid cushioning runs between 130 and 140. You get about three to 400 miles on a pair of shoes or three to five months if you're wearing them three to four days a week. And then high cushioning, four to 500 miles and you get about four to six months of three to four days a week in them. So now that depends uh, if someone is substantially overweight um, and six foot five, they're going to get substantially less use out of a pair of shoes than someone else who may be 90 pounds and uh, four foot two. Uh, so it does come into play in terms of lifestyle, how they're using the shoes, but this is a general guideline for all of these things. Uh, something I do want to talk about with everyone is the price points. Um, now, this, this uh, discussion is usually shown to college students. And so normally when they see, oh my God, these are really expensive um, shoes because they are college students and they may be starving. Um, they, they see these price points and they don't understand, oh my gosh, can I get something less expensive? Yes and no, actually. Uh, so high quality cushioning just means that the company put in a good amount of technology into their shoe to support the foot, whether it's low, medium, or high cushioning. Um, 
Now, when you talk about high quality cushioning, normally that starts at around $100 for a pair of shoes. Anything less than that, and you're not getting the support that you need, uh, regardless of how much cushioning that you have. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get it for less. Uh, this is called a price protected industry. So the footwear industry is a price protected industry. And a price protected industry means that the companies will set their prices all at the same amount. So um, like, uh, let's say Brooks Running. Brooks Running or uh, Asics, whatever company you'd like to pick. They say, okay, Brooks Adrenaline, came out in November, released November 1st. The Brooks Adrenaline 22 was released November 1st. So that shoe has a one-year lifespan where it's going to be on the market for one year. The Brooks Adrenaline is then $130. It's $130 uh, at your local podiatrist uh, office. It's $130 at Dick's Sporting Goods in Big Box. It's $130 at Foot Locker is $130 at your local running store. It's $130 at the online retailer. It's $130 across the board anywhere you possibly can go. Um, if it's sold and advertised for less, accounts will lose their account. They do not sell it for less than $130 for that year. Once that shoe is no longer current, so you know the like that, it goes with cars too. If you think about cars, the 2020 model is now going out. The 2021 models are coming in. The 2020 model is now on sale. The 2021 model is um, at MSRP price. That's how the industry works. Uh, so you can get high quality cushioning shoes for less. You just can't be as picky with color um, or model just because they may have run out of them um, over the course of the clearance sales to push them out. So that's how the pricing industry works for, uh, for the footwear industry. Uh, so in terms of shoes, and this is something I would like to for everyone to learn, do not get a shoe, all right, it, unless it's a low cushioning shoe, but do not get a mid cushion or a high cushion shoe that is less its MSRP, its original price, is less than $130. Do not do it, all right? Make sure the original price was $130 or more. Do not get a shoe that's less than that, all right, for your own sake. That's a, usually a great rule of thumb to go with. Um, if they're $70, okay, awesome. They're last year's model, take them. Um, they're probably high quality cushioning and high quality technology that was put into the shoe. So please, Use that as a rule of thumb for yourself. Um, now, as you get into, if you get into shoes and you understand footwear more and more, you, you start understanding, oh my gosh, how much of a difference it makes. Um, I, I get into trouble with that all the time where my shoes get too old and I have to have someone say, Matt, you just got to throw those out, get a new pair. It's not worth it. Um, so we all have those, have all have those quirks. You know, we don't want to get rid of them, but you should, all right? If they're getting old, you ha you really need to to protect your, uh, to protect your body. Um, I feel it in my first metatarsal in my foot. If I have an older pair of shoes, it starts throbbing and starts pulling, um, and it is does become an issue if my shoes are a bit older. So uh, please take care of your body and and look into getting a high quality pair of shoes. Now, here's another excerpt from the Dynamic Footwear Science Certification by the Binghamton Health Campaign. Um, they're talking about heel-to-toe drop in this one. So, defining drop. Heel-to-toe offset, or drop, is a, is a term that measures the difference in stack height between the cushioned heel versus the stack height of the forefoot. If a shoe's heel is measured at 23 millimeters and the shoe's forefoot is 15 millimeters, the shoe would be considered to have an 8 millimeter drop. So heel to toe offset equals stack height of the heel minus stack height of the forefoot. The take home, the lower the drop, the flatter the shoe, front to back. Think high heels, all right? High is a high offset or drop, flats, low offset or drop. So you can see here in the picture below, it's a 10 millimeter differential between the cushioning in the back and the cushioning in the front. Um, 
Why does this matter? Oh, I don't have it here. Heal the toe drop uh, does matter in terms of how someone may work out. So when you are working out with uh, squats and different body weight exercises that you're on your feet, you generally want a flatter shoe. Um, you want a, a, a zero to four to even six millimeter heel to toe drop. You do not want a 10 or a 12. Um, and so it's very important that you do that in order to have proper biomechanics for that type of weightlifting. Um, on the other hand, it, those with Achilles issues, if you drop them from a 10 millimeter or a 12 millimeter differential down to a six or a four or even a zero, then that differential and that Achilles issue will actually flare up a little bit more. So if you think about it, if you've lived in heels, if you lived in a, in a very high differential for a long period of time in your life, your calf will be tighter, your hamstring will be tighter because of it, and you have to take time to be able to stretch it out a little bit more. Generally speaking, proper biomechanics and more natural biomechanics is when you have a zero millimeter differential. Now, over the years, all of our bodies have gotten used to different things. We have to make sure that we don't change too much of what we're used to in order to avoid injury. <clears throat> Footwear contour. Footwear contour is uh, all about either if it's contoured in the center, mid contour, or straight last. Uh, aggressive versus straight last. And you can see these on the pictures to the right. You can see how it's aggressively contoured in this New Balance um, this New Balance 1080 over here, whereas the uh, the Brooks Ghost a little bit wider in the midfoot, whereas the Saucony Echelon is much wider in the midfoot. Um, really, all we're doing is we're looking at someone's foot. You want to look at someone's foot and see, okay, do they have an aggressive contour and a or a straight contour? And the one that they look like is the one that we want to fit into. All right, so we don't want to put someone who has a very aggressive. Um, or a very wide midfoot into something with an aggressive contour. It's not going to be comfortable. Um, so that is what we're looking at in this slide here, another excerpt from the Dynamic Footwear Science Certification by the Binghamton Health Campaign. And it's all about just fitting the foot shape to the shoe shape for best comfort. So here's another example of this. We have a more narrow sh foot here. Uh, where we have a kind of a medium foot here, a wide foot, and an extra wide foot. And you can see the contour of this shoe versus this shoe versus this shoe versus this shoe. All right, you can see the differences in the widths in the midfoot. Another excerpt from that certification. Uh, rotation of shoes. There was actually an, a, a study done in Luxembourg where runners rotated through three or four pairs of shoes throughout their training of different models, not the same model of shoes. So if someone likes, I keep going back to the Brooks Ghost, Brooks Adrenaline. If someone likes the Brooks Adrenaline, they had one pair of Brooks Adrenalines and then three pairs of something else, all right, or three pairs of three different things of something else. They had a 39% decrease in injury rates. Um, and this is because shoes are not natural, and we have to understand that they're not natural. And so, therefore, if you keep pressing the same pressure point over and over again, you are going to create chronic and acute injuries due to that. Uh, so it is healthiest to be able to rotate your shoes on a daily basis. Uh, budget is probably the largest concern for most people, and most people look to purchase about two pairs of, uh, pairs of shoes per year. Um, as pairs become worn out every six months. For best results with a balance between budget and injury rates, it's recommended that someone gets two pairs of shoes every year <clears throat> and rotates them rather than just purchasing one pair every six months. It's a great way to be able to decrease injury rates and help with your own personal health. Toe box, another excerpt from the Dynamic Footwear Science Certification. Um, they have been great. They are able to provide me with a bunch of <clears throat> a bunch of um, studies and science of what is out there for footwear. And so, toe back and toe box anatomy. The toe box, as you may guess from the name, is the forwardmost area of the shoe where the space 
for the toes. In recent years, the running shoe industry has shifted from very narrow toe boxes to more spacious due to a variety of foot issues that have pinpointed narrow, tight shoes as one of the variables for the causes. As you can see, you have both toe box height or depth, and you have toe box width. Uh, so you can see that here in the, the height on the left-hand side and the width on this side over here. Um, and so the wider the toe box, generally the healthier the toe box, but not everyone is used to that. Um, if you are doing squats and uh, you're doing lunges, generally a wider toe box is better for your foot to be able to splay out and create balance for your body to be able to properly do those exercises um, in a more functional way. So keep that in mind when you're working out in your next uh, what type of shoes and how, how they're fitting to your foot. You can see here more of that toe box aspect. This is something from Ultra. It's a it's a foot shoe company uh, that makes all of their shoes with a very wide toe box. You can see how the metatarsals are splayed out and allows the foot to be better balance itself. If you think about your hands and if you try to stabilize yourself with your hands, how do you stabilize yourself? I want you to do it right now. Place your hands out in front of you. Lock your elbows, place your hands out. What happens to your hands? Most likely, you spread out your hands, all right? Same thing with your feet. Your feet are meant to do that. So for summary, we talked about proper size, all right? Making a thumbs width from the front bumper. Talked about supination and pronation and neutral versus posted shoes where excessive pronation is the inward rotation at the ankle. Um, and so posted shoes help with that excessive pronation, but most people should probably be in a neutral shoe. We talked about durability. Uh, where you get somewhere between two and 500 miles or two to six months for a pair of shoes. Uh, we talked about heel to toe drop, uh, where zero heel to toe drop is much more natural. But since most of us have lived in higher heel to toe drop shoes, as well as heels, um, our calves and hamstrings may be a little tighter, and we have to be able to go to a more natural state l less quickly in order to avoid injury. Uh, contour, we're always looking to fit our feet. If it's an aggressive contoured foot or a straight lasted contoured foot, we want to fit our foot to what the actual shoe looks like. Um, so we looked at just fitting the foot to the contour. We're looking at the price point and the quality of materials. <clears throat> we always want to get high quality foam. Um, minimal amount that we really want the original price to be is $130. Now granted, it's a price protected industry. So current models are price protected at that $130 to $150. And then clearance models or previous, previous year shoes are marked down from there. Cushioning levels are high, medium, and low, uh, depending on what people may want and, and are interested in. Low, low cushion shoes, people are maybe more interested in feeling the ground versus medium and high cushioning, which does help with cumulative standing trauma. Rotation of pressure points, we talked about getting two pairs of shoes over the course of a year rather than just purchasing one pair of shoes every six months to rotate through pressure points and decrease injury rates. And then we talked about um, some of the footwear structure. So that is the summary for... Dynamic Fort Worth Science, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you the next time.